Hey everyone! So in an earlier video I talked about one of the main threats associated with having FAP, which is colorectal cancer, and now I want to talk about some of the extraclonic manifestations of the disease. And I think it's really important to talk about this since FAP is such a rare disease, a lot of people in the medical community don't really know that much about it, which means it really comes down to us to be our own advocate and to do the research and be aware of these other things that could happen to us because of having FAP. And first things first, I wanted to mention the term Gardner syndrome, which refers to a person who has FAP with an extraclonic manifestation. And I believe this term is pretty outdated just because most people with FAP usually have some sort of extraclonic manifestation, uh, but I just wanted to put the term out there for your personal reference. And moving on to actual extraclonic manifestations of FAP, I thought I'd start with the other types of cancer that we have an increased risk for. And starting with the digestive tract, uh, there are these fundic gland polyps which can carpet the majority of our stomach, and about 80% of people with FAP develop these. Um, but we usually don't have to worry too much about these, um, but there are some tumors that can form in the lower part of our stomach that can turn cancerous, so stomach cancer is a definite possibility. And then we also have an increased risk for small intestine related cancers, especially cancer of the duodenum, which is the first part of your small intestine. And then there's pancreatic cancer and thyroid cancer, and we can also form adrenal tumors and tumors in the central nervous system and develop brain cancer. And then there's also this thing called heptoblastoma, which is a type of liver cancer that's predominantly found in children. And once you're over the age of 16, you usually don't have to worry about this, uh, but children with FAP are at an increased risk for it. And uh, all of these cancers, um, you know, while we are at an increased risk for some of which have a higher significance than others, but again, we are at an increased risk for all of them, so we should be screened appropriately. And then the other main um, extraclonic manifestation that I'm probably most afraid of uh, are these things called desmoid tumors, which are benign tumors, and they're pretty rare in the general population, and they're pretty much just localized to people with FAP, and even out of the small FAP population, only about a third of them actually develop desmoid tumors, which means they're pretty rare. And that, unfortunately, means that there's not a lot of research that's been done on them, so there isn't a cure for them. And they basically are these benign tumors that are induced by abdominal trauma, such as having your colon removed, which means that this surgery that doctors like to say cures FAP actually can cause desmoid tumors to form. And desmoid tumors are second biggest cause of fatality in people with FAP when the first biggest is colon cancer which has a 100% chance of occurrence. Um, so these are definitely a really big problem and uh, in people with FAP they mainly develop in the abdominal area and doctors approach to them is usually to do nothing unless they get to the point that they start interfering with the way your organs are functioning, in which case they'll consider going in surgically and removing them. Uh, but the problem is that surgically going in and trying to remove them is abdominal trauma, which can potentially induce more desmoid tumors to grow. Uh, so these desmoid tumors have a high rate of regrowth, and if you go in to remove one, two more might grow in its place, so surgery is an, an ideal solution for them. And uh, it's really important to realize that they, they are a problem in people with FAP. And when I was first diagnosed and meeting with all these doctors, everyone kept saying, you know, you need to get your colon out because you're going to develop colon cancer. And oh yeah, there are these other things that could happen to you down the road, uh, one of which are these desmoid tumors, but they're just benign tumors. You, you don't have to worry about them at all. And if I hadn't done my own research, I would have gone the rest of my life thinking that these tumors are completely harmless, which just isn't the case. Uh, so that's an example of where it's really important for us to be our own advocate. Um, and the other 
main um, group of extraclinic manifestations are these things that usually don't have to worry too much about in terms of your health. Uh, the first of which are abbreviated CHRPE, and I mentioned these earlier. Uh, they are those uh, the bear claw lesions that can form in your eye, and there is a small chance that they can turn cancerous, uh, but for the most part, you really don't need to worry about them, and they're mainly just used as a diagnostic tool. And then another thing are sebaceous cysts, which are basically fat deposits. And I actually had one um, on my forehead that I had removed before uh, being diagnosed, and they're not really a threat to your health. Um, they're more of a cosmetic issue. And along that same line, there are osteomas, which are um, sort of bony projections, and uh, we can form them on our skull and also on our jaw. And uh, again, it's usually more of a cosmetic issue. You usually don't have to worry about it too much. I actually have some uh, on the back of my head, um, but the one exception is if they form on your jaw, um, doctors might want to try and go in surgically to remove them. Uh, and then the other, another thing is dental abnormalities, uh, which are, um, particularly for us, missing teeth or extra teeth. And uh, I actually had an extra shard of tooth in my gum, and um, before I was diagnosed, I had it extracted. And, you know, while that wasn't pleasant, um, you know, it wasn't that big of a deal, so you usually don't have to worry too much about these um, imposing on your health. And that's about it as far as the major extraclonic manifestations of FAP. And just because you have FAP doesn't mean you're going to develop all of these things. Um, and each thing has a different significance of occurring. And, you know, it's just, it's just important to be aware of all of these things that could possibly happen because of having FAP and, you know, things to make sure that you're on the lookout for and that your doctors are on the lookout for. So yeah, if you guys have any questions or comments or video suggestions, leave a comment below or message me. Alright, see you guys later.